Hey guys, I'm Matt and this is PSI Conversion. In this video, we're gonna go over the Tanks Inc. fuel system and how to set up your pump and sending unit. So I've got the whole kit here. You get a nice brand new tank. You com it comes with the straps, comes with the sending unit and fittings to attach your, your EFI pump to, as well as the mount for your sender. And some models have a two piece filler neck that you can attach. Other pieces will just have the filler neck right on the tank. And gaskets hardware that you need to install this. So what you're gonna need most importantly is a tape measure or ruler to measure the depth of your tank to get your pump height and your sending unit float set up correctly. You're also gonna need a ratchet, or I'd recommend a wrench, that's seven millimeters to take the sending unit apart. Um, a 13 millimeter wrench, a Phillips head screwdriver, a smaller flathead screwdriver, and a cutting utensil to cut the pipes on your return and your supply line to get them set up at the correct height, as well as a heat gun or a small torch to heat up the, the hose, get it slipped over the fuel pump, all good. So everything here comes with some very nice instructions with very clear diagrams. We'll put those up on the screen for you to take a look at so you can get all the heights up properly. So we'll throw those up right now. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is measure the depth of your tank just by going in through the top. So this tank here is six and a half inches deep for the supply and as well for the descending unit. So if we follow the chart that we just put up previously, we're gonna set this sending unit up so that it is, the pivot point is at a depth of three and a quarter inches. So we're gonna take this small seven millimeter nut off here to get this wire loose. We're gonna remove these two Phillips head screws on the back of the actual sending unit. And we're gonna remove these screws with the nuts on the back so I can take this extra plate off so I can get this nice and short. Now, if your tank is deeper, you might need this extra piece to set the height properly. You have to remove the nuts and they also thread in from the front as well. So the screwdriver and the ratchet. Based on our tank depth, we want to set this at three and a quarter inches to this pivot point here. So we just measure that from the base plate and this has to go almost all the way up for this tank. And then we're gonna put our screws back in. I wanna make sure this wire is not gonna get damaged, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it back around. And now that we've got our pivot point set, we can go ahead and set the float length, which again is in that chart from before. So we just gotta go ahead and remove this flathead screw. Not all the way, just loosen it up so you can take this rod out that they have as a placeholder. And it will tell you on here which side the float goes on. Make sure you 
face it the correct direction. And we want this to be about 3.8 inches from the pivot point to the center of the actual float. You're gonna to wanna to trim this side to get it to sit down in your sending unit into your tank. But that is gonna be how that functions based off the chart from before and the right depth. So then to set up your pump, you've got your return and your supply. Now the supply is left extra long, so that way if you have a deeper tank, your pump can sit much lower. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to have to trim this and just like before, when we measure the tank depth, we're gonna measure from the base plate and we're just gonna subtract the height of the pump with the sock on it to get our, how long we need this hose. All right, so once you've got your sock pressed onto your fuel pump, we just wanna measure the overall height of this, starting from the top of the barb to the bottom of the sock. So ours is right around five inches. So we wanna subtract that from our six and a half inch tank depth, which means that this fuel supply hose on the bottom here only needs to be an inch and a half long. So what we wanna do is cut that so that way we can attach our pump and get this all set up. For that, I'm gonna use this nice pair of shears. I'm sure there's probably a better tool for that. I just, this is what I have right now. So I use the shears to mark my line before I take this hose clamp off and pull this straw off. So now that we've got this trimmed, we're gonna go ahead and put the hose clamps on. Let's make sure this is nice and secure. And if you have a heat gun, I have this mini torch. I'd recommend using a heat gun so you don't have an open flame, but you heat this hose up and you can slip your pump right into it. Many hours later, so once you've got your pump set up, you gotta set your return height, which is just going to be your tank depth minus an inch. So we wanna set that up to five and a half inches. And when the return faces straight down like it does on this application, you wanna cut at a slash angle. If your return were to be on an angle, you wanna do a straight cut at the end took this apart and got it ready for the final installation. I went and put the isolator on the fuel pump. I made sure I plugged the connector in before I slid the fuel pump up onto the hose. And I went and installed the rubber gasket that seals your plate to your tank. Now, when you go to put this in your tank, you're gonna wanna use either some, some gasket dressing or Permatex has this head gasket shellac. Either one is suitable. Um, you just want to go ahead and brush that along your gasket surfaces and make sure they're nice and sealed a lot as well as the threads on the bolts just to make sure nothing can escape from your tank. So you can go ahead and drop your pump assembly in. Make sure your wires are not going to get damaged as they go in. And you want to make sure you're sitting inside your bathroom. hose clamp is going to be around. So make sure none of your hose clamps are going to be in the way and reposition them if necessary. All right, now that we've got this sitting in the tank, you can see you have your feed 
for right now, we have the return line blocked off because for the time being, this is gonna be in a return list system. And then we have a vent both on the fuel pump module as well as on the tank since this is an EFI design tank. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna Y both of these together and then you wanna get it set up to a rollover valve, check valve, and you wanna sit this in your chassis at least as high as the highest point of the tank and that includes your filler neck. So make sure that you get this up nice and high that way and run your hose down and tee into both of these fittings. Then you can go ahead and run your power supplies to the terminals on the top for your pump and the ground. And you also want to make sure that your, your whole tank is very securely grounded for both accurate measurement with the sender and for pump function. We're going to use these braided straps, very similar to the straps that we sell in our engine grounding kit. And then once you get these installed, you get ready to set this up in your car. All right, so here's the connections that you have to make on the top of the fuel pump module. You've got your power stud here. Now this is if you have a PSI harness or an LS swap harness coming from your fuel pump relay, the power coming out of that relay is gonna run to this positive side here. And then you've got your ground. This just needs to go to a good ground, your chassis, your battery directly to it, whatever is close and you can get a good ground connection on. And then for your sending unit, again, you've got your ground stud to the chassis or to the battery, wherever you're gonna run your grounds for your fuel tank to, make sure this has a good ground. And then your fuel level signal that can run to your gauge cluster or whatever is controlling your fuel level gauge or monitoring your fuel level. The other thing I wanna point out is it with these EFI tanks. If you take a look at our display here with the cutaway, you can see the baffling, which is what really makes these good for EFI systems and set up for EFI is to keep all the fuel around the pump so you never run your pump dry because that's the quickest way to kill your pump is having it run dry. So make sure that even when your tank is low, you're keeping fuel right at the pickup for the pump and keeps your pump nice and alive. Thanks for watching guys. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, leave us a comment with any future video ideas or any questions you have about your tank setup. We hope this helps you get wired up and fired up. We'll see you in the next video.